begin this morning with Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. He joins us from Clemson, South Carolina, where I suspect one or two residents have a rooting interest in tomorrow night's <laughs> Sugar Bowl. Senator, great to have you with us. Let's get straight to the Thank situation you. in Iran. What is the import of these demonstrations on the street, and what should President Trump do or say about them? Well, it tells us that the Obama approach of uh, relieving sanctions, hoping the regime would moderate, has failed. The people are not getting the benefit of sanctions relief. They're more upset with their oppressors than ever. The money from sanction relief has gone into rebuilding the uh, Iranian military and they're destabilizing the Mideast. So if I were President Trump, I would uh, have a nationwide address pretty soon explaining uh, why the Iranian nuclear deal is a bad deal for the world, what a better deal would look like, and urge Congress and the European allies to get a better deal with Iran uh, before it's too late. And the purpose of that national address would be to take note of this moment and put the United States four square on behalf and behind those people protesting in the streets. Some have said that would be the wrong right. thing to do because that would give the regime an <clears throat> enemy to point at, us again. That was the Obama approach. If I were Trump, I'd do the exact opposite of Obama. Obama said, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to mess up the chance of getting a deal with Iran. Well, the deal with Iran hasn't worked. The money didn't go to benefit the people. It went to benefit the Ayatollah and his henchmen. The Iranian people are not our enemy. Uh, the Ayatollah is the enemy of the world. Here's what I would do if I was President Trump. I would explain uh, what, I, what a better deal would look like. It's not enough to watch. President Trump is tweeting uh, very sympathetically to the Iranian people. But you just can't tweet here. You have to lay out a plan. And if I were President Trump, I'd lay out a plan as to how I would engage the regime. I would tell the Europeans and the Congress and the world that America is going to withdraw from this agreement unless it's a better deal. And I'd lay out what a be better deal would look like. And I would stand with the Iranian people the entire time. Have you conveyed this personally to the president? I just did. Okay, very good. Sometimes you could do that by phone, and I'm just curious about that. Yeah, yeah. North Korea, let's talk about that. You've said recently that if there is another missile test or a nuclear weapons test in North Korea, there's a 70% probability we right. will attack North Korea. 70%. That's a higher risk level than anyone I've talked to has right. placed on that issue. Why is it so high? I said if there's a, a nuclear weapons test, it goes from 30% to 70%. It's based on a lot of time with President Trump. He made a decision early on to deny the uh, North Korean regime the capability to hit America with a nuclear tip missile. There's two things he could have done. He could have given them the capability to hit America and tell them if you ever use it, I'm going to blow you off the map. That's called containment. He rejected that idea because you can't contain North Korea. They will sell anything they make if they don't use it. So he's in the camp of denial. He's told the North Koreans, I will deny you the capability to hit America with a nuclear tip missile. If they test another bomb, they're closer to, to having that capability. And as a last resort, I will use military force to stop you. Now, the Iranians are watching us in North Korea. North Korea is watching us in Iran. 2018 will be a year of opportunity and extreme danger. The president has drawn a line in North Korea telling the regime, I will never let you hit America with a nuclear tip missile. If I have to, I'll use military force to stop you. Now the Iranians are watching the way he engages with North Korea and vice versa. So we got a chance here to deliver some fatal blows to really bad actors in 2018. But if we blink, God help us all. What I hear you saying, Senator, is 2018 is the year of preemptive strikes. 2018 is going to be the year to deny North Korea the capability to hit the homeland. Sanctions will never work completely without the threat of mi credible military force. How do you change a man's behavior who's willing to kill his own family, torture his own people to stay in power? He's living large and he could care less about his people. The only way he'll change his behavior if he believes Donald Trump would use military force to destroy his regime. And the Iranians are watching how Trump deals with North Korea. You'll ask me in a minute how my relationship has evolved with the president. It's evolved because he is president of the United States. He beat me like a drum and I want to help him where I can because there's a lot on this man's plate and we should all want to help him. What have you learned about him that makes him different and more someone you want to work with and can work with than he was when you said he was unfit for office and quite possibly a kook? Yeah, I said everything. I said he was a xenophobic, race-baiting, religious bigot. 
I ran out of adjectives. Well, the American people spoke. They rejected my analysis, and he is now my president. I worked with President Obama where I could, with President Bush, even though I supported uh, Senator McCain. The bottom line, he is president of the United States. I've got to know him better. He asked a lot of good questions. I think he's made good foreign policy choices. He's now arming the Ukraine, long overdue. He's got the right policy to deny North Korea the ability to hit America with a nuclear tipped missile. And he is now on the side of the Iranian people. But he has to do more than watch. He actually has to act. And if I were him, I would withdraw from the nuclear agreement with Iran next year if it's not made better by the Congress and our European allies.